Hello and welcome to part two, the great pretender that is Muhammad. So we are just reviewing three things that would I would accept that would make somebody a prophet. One is a higher, higher moral teaching that was given to him by God from Revelation. Number two, if they could do miracles or signs to, to basically seal their message that it's from God. And that these signs can't be manipulated as magic or there's no excuse for how they happened. Or number three, that they could tell events that will happen in the future to um, seal their, their prophetic message. So, especially if we're going to be talking about people that will reject the deity of Christ. Um, hard struck into believe, you know, in order to believe that Muhammad is a prophet, you have to believe that Satan screwed over Allah and all of his books and misguided thousands of people, actually millions of people throughout history. In fact, according to the Quran, Allah made it look like Jesus was on the cross. Well, didn't Allah know the future? Didn't he know by making it look like Christ was on the cross, it would be him that caused Christianity to start up? And this is very embarrassing for the Muslim because the crucifixion of Christ is one of the best attested things in history. But anyways, let's move on. So he couldn't do miracles. And the answer was because people don't believe in the miracles, which is a big fat lie. Uh, and he does not know the treasures of the future, as we read in 6 verse 50 and 7 verse 188. And 13 verse 7 is about the miracles. Sahih Muslim, uh, Abu Haraya reported that, uh, let's see what Muhammad says. The Messenger of Allah, peace, peace upon him, said, Do not initiate the Salam, the Jews and the Christians, before they greet you. And when you meet any of them on the road, force them to go into the narrowest part of it. Back then, the narrowest part of the alley was the sewer line. So when you see Jews and Christians in the street, do not say hello to them. Do not say peace to them. Do you see how filthy this teaching is? But force them to the narrowest part of the road. So it certainly wasn't upon his higher moral teaching. And in fact, we know this, how Muhammad taught you to beat your wives, where Christ said, where, sorry, where St. Paul says to love the church as, uh, love your wife as Christ loved the church. We see Christ teaching to love your enemy. Muhammad and Allah are saying to fight and kill your enemy. So it definitely wasn't on the higher moral teaching because he was going backwards in morality. Then we have something really big. Narrated by Kateda. Anas bin Malik, Malik said, The Prophet used to visit all his wives in round during the day and night, and they were eleven in number. I asked Anas, had the Prophet the strength for it? And has replied, we used to say that the prophet was given the strength of 30 men. And Syed said to the authority of Kothed that Anas had told him about nine wives only, not 11. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 5, Number 268. So apparently Muhammad's miracle was that he was a sex maniac and he could really, you know, he was like a porn star here. He could really... Uh, satisfy all his wives even though he could only get to nine and then he was done for sorry muhammad narrated by anas bin malik the prophet used to visit all his wives in one night and he had nine wives at that time sahih al-bukhari volume one book five number 282 and here uh this is just talking about the hadith that say the same thing but here's where it really gets tricky his wife actually writes this. Little Aisha. The, you know, the baby wife that Muhammad had. Magic was worked on Allah's apostle. So that he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives. Well, he actually had not. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 7, book 71, number 660. See also number 661. Ouch, but this is huge. Because if Muhammad was living an illusion, thinking he was having sex with his wives when he did not, 
how do we know that when he thought he was getting a revelation from Gabriel, when really he didn't? He was living an illusion. And of course, every time Muhammad did wrong, they blamed it on black magic. Oh yes, black magic was worked upon him. That's how he got the satanic verses. Well, your prophet was satanic. Sorry to say, Muslims. But he was. Uh, now, here's the interesting thing. If he's following this Allah, and they deceived, and Allah deceives, and Allah is the best of the deceivers. Surah 3, verse 54. And those who Allah guides, and, uh, Allah, and Allah wills, and those who Allah does not guide, no guidance for them. The Bible, it's different. God loves to guide everybody. The book of Peter says, God wishes that none shall perish, but all come into repentance. If your Allah misguides somebody, there's no guidance for them. What kind of God is this, Muslims? What kind of God do you worship? You worship Satan, trying to be worshipped as God. And so, what is the story to sanctify that Gabriel... That Muhammad seen revelations from Gabriel. Do you know what the story is for it, guys? It's actually really sad and quite funny at the same time. So Muhammad said to his wife, you know, I'm seeing something and I don't know what it is. She said, okay, next time you see him, come tell me. So she, next time he says, I see it, I see it, I see it. She says, okay, well. Come sit on my lap, he said. Okay, uh-huh. All right. So she sits on a, he sits on her lap. Then she starts taking off her clothes and doing a strip tease. She starts taking off her shirt and her panties. And then she says, do you see him now? And he says, no. She says, glory to Allah, it's an angel. So the only story that validates that Muhammad saw an angel was his wife doing a strip tease for him. <sighs> kind of lacking in the evidence. Then, on top of that, this story is extremely stupid. Because, according to the Quran, God created Adam and then told all the angels to bow down to Adam. But, Adam was naked when they bowed down to him. And the only one that ran away and would not was Satan. <laughs> Get the point? This religion is very stupid. And like I said, Muhammad is the great deceiver. Probably one of the greatest deceivers. Take care, guys. And may truth and reason open your eyes to this Muhammad. And you come to know true salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.